Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about new acrylic templates in the shop, also new bag packs in the shop. The book review will be for a book called Pop Up Embroidery. I'll be announcing the next sew along and I also have some really fun Minikin season four patchwork projects to share with you. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Danny, for that uh, little bit of a zoom in. Um, before we get started, our regular spam reminder, I would like to remind you that So Sweetness does not send private messages through Facebook in case you're a Facebook viewer. Um, we don't request any information such as credit card numbers, we don't ask you to send or wire money, we don't ask for your phone number. So if you see a private message come through on your Facebook account that looks like it's from So Sweetness, go ahead and report and or block that. If you're a YouTube viewer, if you've left a comment on the show and you see a reply to your comment uh, with what looks like a So Sweetness avatar asking for you to send credit card information, your phone number, to transfer money, anything like that, go ahead and report or block that. Uh, we never ask for money for the prizes. We don't ask for money to go towards shipping. If you've won a prize, we just send you the prize or give you the prize at no cost to you. I always announce the winner's name verbally on the show, and we've also started adding the winner's names to the description in the show as well. And my second reminder for the show, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So I see Cindy's watching from Texas. Uh, I know Danny posted a lot of your little avatars while I was talking about my spam reminder. So uh, we really appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, for leaving any comments on the show. Any comments left throughout the show on Facebook or YouTube, we compile those comments together for our giveaways. And what else did I want to let you know about? There was one more thing, it kind of went right out of my head. Uh, if, it, if it comes back, I'll let you know. Um, lots of fun things to share with you tonight. My table is full of all sorts of items. Um, the first thing that I wanted to let you know about is the new acrylic templates have arrived for some of the Minikin Season 4 projects. Danny's going to switch to the overhead second, camera. Second, oh, okay. Danny's letting me know one second. So we don't have acrylic templates for all 12 projects, uh, just for seven projects where they made sense. Uh, for instance, the Lovegrass sewing machine cover. Uh, there's no pattern pieces for that because you work off the measurements of either your sewing machine or whatever item that you're... Um, using that pattern instructions to cover. So there's no pattern pieces for that, thus no acrylic templates. And there were a few, such as the Oleander Yoga Bag, Oleander Yoga Bag, where the pieces were just so large, uh, unfortunately we couldn't offer templates for. But we do have seven acrylic templates in the shop for Minikin Season 4. I've linked to that in the description. I'll just hold up an example of one of the templates. So this is what the acrylic looks like. Um, it's three millimeters in thickness, and there's also a hanging hole in case you would have pegs in your sewing room and would like to hang some of the acrylic templates on a peg um, in the groups. Most of the acrylic template sets come with uh, several pieces of acrylic, such as this from the Sprinkles Baking Tote. This was one of my favorite projects from Minikin Season 4, but again, uh, the link is in the description in case you're interested in any of the acrylic templates. Everything okay over there, there Danny? Yeah. Okay, so I, you might have heard me talk about uh, winter sewing using milk jugs. I started doing that this past winter. I actually planted <clears throat> 31 milk jugs full of seeds and they just sat outside all winter. I planted them on actually Christmas day. Danny's gonna put a picture up on the screen of my set of milk jugs and then they're starting to sprout. So I have another picture of one of the jugs sprouting. So here's here's all my jugs. They're all numbered with a gardening marker so they won't um, fade with the sunlight. And there's a second picture inside one of the jugs with all of the sprouts. So 
I purchased my seed packets from Prairie Moon. Um, they specialize in native plants um, specific to my area. And the packets varied, the seed packets varied um, depending on the plant. So some of the packets had maybe 10 seeds. Some might have had, I don't know, 40 or 50. So it widely varied. And because this was my first year doing it, I went ahead and just dispersed however many seeds were in each packet. So each jug is just a single type of plant. Um, I guess I could have been more frugal and the ones with a lot more seeds, maybe just taken maybe 10 seeds out and sort of spread them out uh, throughout the surface of the dirt. But like I said, it was my first time doing it. I didn't know if all the seeds would spread out if I just get a few, um, that picture that I showed with that milk jug with all the little seedlings, uh, that's quite a bit of seedlings. But I joined a Facebook group last year for winter sowing. I've linked to it in the description in case you're interested in checking that group out. It's a Facebook group and that's how I learned how to winter sow. And what I'm going to do is, um, they call it hunk of seeds method. So what you do is water inside the jug when you're ready to take this, the little seedlings out kind of tip the hunk of dirt out and I'm gonna be actually cutting it in segments, kind of like how you cut brownies out of the pan. So I'm gonna separate each jug into um, a bunch of smaller segments and then plant those in my garden. So that's my task for this upcoming week. I'm really excited actually. I've, I've read that the seedlings that are winter sown are, are really strong and healthy seedlings. So I'm excited to get them in my garden and um, trying to figure out all the spots where they will be dispersed throughout our property. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, what's your favorite plant? So I'm thinking about my plants and my seedlings. Um, my favorite, at least from pictures, is called Queen of the Prairie. It's a native plant to Illinois where we live. And I planted a bunch of plugs from Queen of the Prairie last year. We have a patch of sort of like a moist patch, which is what they like. And so I'm really excited for them to be uh, blooming this year, hopefully. Um, they're pink, kind of like cotton candy, and actually the blooms actually look like cotton candy. So I'm super excited, but um, that's the one I have to say that I'm most looking forward to um, coming up this year. So we have some new fabric in the shop, um, some new backpacks. The Tula Pink fabric has arrived. So I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you uh, the backpacks that we have in stock right now. And the link is in the description in case you're interested in any of these backpacks. So what I did was I paired what I thought would be a great exterior fabric for a bag or a pouch or other project. And then um, what I thought was a great coordinating lining fabric. So the elephants are probably top of my list as far as these new tulip pink fabrics. And they all have a bit of neon in them. So the neon in this particular print is sort of a neon pink. And I thought it would look great with this polka dot. Actually, I chose all of the linings for this run of backpacks uh, for polka dots because I thought they would look fantastic. So elephants up first. Let me just go ahead and slide these out of the way. Even though the hippos is sort of a smaller scale print, I really love them. They're just really fun and whimsical. I like that they all have little birds or butterflies perched on their heads or noses. And um, I would have to say this teal or seafoam green color is definitely my favorite. Green's my favorite color from childhood and somehow greens always speak to me. This lion print in person is amazing. It is so neon. Um, just the neon peaches and pinks really jump off the fabric in person. I love this one so much and I can't wait to make a bag with it and it comes with this coordinating um, neon uh, orange polka dot. My mom said when she was folding all the fabrics and putting them together in the bag packs, she couldn't look at this particular fabric because it's honestly, it is so neon in person. She had to look away because it kind of if you stare at it for any length of time, it, it almost kind of blinds you. She was just folding a lot of fabric, so she needed to uh, keep her eyes in good shape and away from staring at those bright orange polka dots. Another elephant bag pack is this blue version over here. Love the blue. I love the shade of blue. The lime in the, the leaves is really working with this print for me and just love this one. And then one more backpack that we have in stock right now on the website is 
this giraffe version. Um, yeah, I, I just love all of these. I know the elephants are my slight favorite, but all of these prints are fantastic. And I have some more projects to share with you near the end of the show of some of the Minikin Season 4 projects made in uh, the Everglow. Everglow. Um, Londa says, do you see the dog on the lion print? I don't think I did. Let me pull that one back out, though. Dog. Danny, do you see a dog? Tula does a really good job of sort of hide and seek in her fabrics, so I'm sure I will see it. I see a little fly over here. I'll have to look closer after the show for the dog. I'm really super curious about where it is. And we have one more backpack in sock. This one's designed by Sarah Watts. Um, here's what the backpacks look like, the lining and the exterior fabric stuffed inside. And Sarah Watts came out with this really cute um, cat print. I chose this one to go for the lining for the backpack. And the cat print only is a canvas fabric, just so you're aware. Um, I have links to all of these backpacks in the description in case you're interested in any of these. I I'm trying to expand the backpack offering, so we'll be sprinkling backpacks in the shop throughout the year. I have a question for you, another one. Let me know in the comments, what do you do with your fabric scraps? Do you maybe save them for future projects? Do you um, maybe, especially the salvages, maybe do you, do you use the salvages for um, pouches or maybe you've made a salvage quilt before let me know in the comments what you're doing with your fabric scraps um pat says are you going to show the templates available i will i don't have them all out on the table but i will list them off and i've also linked to them in the description um the sprinkles baking tote um is available as an acrylic template the nut hatch organizer the goldenrod book cover the catalan storage cube the mist flower water bottle tote. There's two more. I said sprinkles already. The other two names are escaping me, but I have linked to all of those in the description um, as far as the Minikin Season 4 acrylic templates go. Oh, the partridge bag was another one. I knew I would forget all those names. There's just so many projects over here, but it helps to have them all out on the table so I can take a glance at them. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we did have the survey as far as which project you would like to see for the next sew along. And I'm really excited to announce that our sew along for the month of May um, by popular vote, which was 40% of the vote, was the Enigma pouch. So um, if you're interested in participating, I'll be sharing more information on next Sunday's show, um, but the next so long project will be the Enigma pouch in case you'd like to start um, gathering your fabrics and it'll be a three week sew along and I hope you'll join us for that. Um, I can't wait to see, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the finished Enigma pouches. So Danny's favorite part of the show when he's not on it, we'd like to invite the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. Danny and I are both really grateful that you've tuned into the show and uh, we really, really appreciate you making time out in your day uh, to watch Social Sunday. So the book review for tonight is a book that I thought was fantastic if you love handwork. It's called Pop-Up Embroidery. It's written by Ashley Den and Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you some of the projects in the book. So this is all hand embroidery and it's really different than other embroidery that I've seen in the past because the projects feature a lot of uh, three-dimensional effects. So I'm going to flip through, of course, the beginning pages in any sewing or craft book is different techniques that you'll be using to make the projects. And so here's just a couple examples of um, the techniques, actually the techniques are quite a lot of pages and they're all um, illustrated using uh, photographs, which I thought is really nice. And lots of the techniques actually in the book are really new to me, so I appreciated that. So let me flip through all the projects in the book. This first project uh, for Cord Rainbow, I, I also wanted to, I don't usually flip through the instructions, but I just wanted you to get an idea of um, the photograph step-by-step -step instructions because I feel like they're really thorough and the photographs are really clear. But let's 
flip through some of the projects. As you can see, high levels of three-dimensional design in all of, all of the projects. I just love something like this. I mean, it really does look like a dandelion that someone's blowing. I also wanted to mention in the back of the book, there are um, templates in case you'd like to make a copy for transferring to your fabric before placing it inside the hoop. And there are also in the back, there's um, a little envelope with uh, iron on transfers, which is a second option for transferring the designs to your fabric. So I thought that was really, really neat. This is the cover project. I think that I thought this was awesome. I love her sweater. I love that her hair is kind of flowing outside the hoop. It's actually, well, I guess three dimensional is the word for it, but I just, it's just so creative. The projects are so creative in this book. I just love them. There's a bunch of projects like this with kind of flower themed. I like that the the actual coffee cup is really popping off the fabric. This is super clever too, love this. And these blueberries actually are made with these little wooden beads. I think that's so brilliant, I just love it. And I think the projects, especially like the blueberries, gives ideas for other things that you can do with um, not necessarily a blueberry, but like wooden beads, working on projects, they're embroidered. Again, love the hat. I mean, like it just really pops off the page. And then there's just a couple more. But yeah, I was, I was really pleasantly surprised. I, I have quite a few embroidery, hand embroidery books in my collection, and I think this is by far the most unique one. So again, all of the copied pages are in the back for transferring and then the iron on transfers in the back as well. And the book is called um, Pop-Up Embroidery and the link to the book is in the description in case you're interested in checking it out. All right, so in case you missed Tula Pink's Instagram from a couple Tuesdays ago, I actually have the projects with me. These projects were all sewn by Michelle Tripp from Bear Boo Boo. I've linked to Michelle's Facebook page in the description. She does um, take custom orders and Michelle sewed all of these Minikin Season 4 projects. I wanted to share them with you because they're all patchwork to some extent and I think even though the Minikin Season 4 projects are do not include the patchwork instructions in the pattern, I think it's just really great inspiration, especially if you're a quilter for other ways you can put your fabric together to make them look unique rather than just using a solid fabric. So um, I'm just going to go through all 12 of the projects and I mean, they're just brilliant. Michelle did an amazing job pairing Notion zippers, zipper tape and the patchwork. She just really tailored them to all of these projects. So. I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you the first project, which is the Goldenrod uh, book cover. Let me get some of these other things out of the way. First off, Michelle used Tulip Pink True Colors and she pieced them in strips for the front cover and then used a bit of Paris fill for uh, the handle. And then on the inside, she sort of changed it up a little bit by kind of bringing some patchwork into um, the lining pockets. So these lining pockets, you can either put your front and back cover of your book in, or if you have other items that you'd like to store inside the book cover. But I think this patchwork is probably my favorite out of all of the different patchworks that uh, Michelle's put together for all of the projects. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going through all of these. I know you guys have seen the Minikin Season 4 projects, but I just thought it would be great to see kind of in a different light. Danny, is there a different zoom for this? Great, thank you. So this is the Calliope jewelry organizer. And what really struck me was the different, I guess, findings that Michelle used. I really love this fold over elastic. It's kind of like an ombre effect. Same with this. Love this little um, moon and stars zipper pull. 
I love the fussy cutting on this ring holder. Michelle used the giraffe's neck, which is really appropriate for um, this particular part of the jewelry organizer. And this is glitter, glitter vinyl, which pulls everything together really nicely. So this jewelry organizer, fantastic. Okay, so this is one of the projects that Michelle made in Everglow, which is uh, those backpack fabrics that I shared earlier. Here's the, the line on the front. I think there's, yep, I knew she had a little bit of patchwork on the inside. So Michelle used a little bit of the salvage and top stitch it uh, just above the snap, which I thought was really clever. And I love the use of the dots and the stripes. <clears throat> I think this is much more neon than it's probably coming up on camera, but fantastic. This is the nut hatch organizer. This is the sewing machine feet version. As you can see, lots of space for um, all of your sewing machine feet or whatever small items you'd look to, like to put inside, maybe rivets or cam snaps, um, things like that. I also like how Michelle put together these Everglow basics. So this is the partridge bag <clears throat> and she used, she kind of wove in some of the stripes in the strap and the flap. There's a back pocket over here with a snap and then on the inside, she used some of the dots. So she basically pulled together all of the basics from um, Tula's Everglow line in this particular cover colorway. I really love the partridge bag um, and yeah, I think it's just a, a really great everyday bag. Okay, so this is your choice for the, the next sew along, the Enigma pouch. And I actually have some stowaways over here. These are two of the blue stem pouches that Michelle made. And here's the inside of the Everglow pouch. I'm actually gonna have Danny switch to the front camera for a few seconds. Violet actually claimed this um, Miss Flower water bottle tote for her water bottles. Again, you can see um, this large scale print that Michelle chose for the front of the pocket. All of the patchwork that she used for the outside, rainbow patchwork, just looked fantastic. I mean, just, just amazing all the creativity that went into these projects. Oh, Danny's telling me to hold it up to the, there, there we go. There's all the, the rainbow patchwork. You gotta keep it in the center. Mm. What else do we have here? I'll save this one for last. This is my favorite. So Michelle made a really large, let me see if I could back up so we could get this in view. Um, sewing machine cover, you can see all the patchwork detail. I had this folded actually, so that's why it looks a little bit crumpled, but lots of detail went into this particular project. And here's actually a selvage on the back. Let me see if I can selvage over here. Great way to use some of your selvages. Let's see what else we have left. Michelle made the Catalan storage cubes in Everglow fabrics. So here's the, the hippos. She works some of the selvage into the handles. And then here's the Everglow elephants. Oh, elephants are on the side over here. And what else? We've got two more sets of projects. So here's the sprinkles baking totes. Uh, there's four of them in the pattern. So Michelle made the smallest one with the hippos. She made the round one with some Tula Pink True Colors patchwork. Patchwork over here. Mm -hmm. 
Lots of patchwork, really pretty patchwork on the front or on the sides. And then I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera for this one. This is the largest size from the Sprinkles Baking Tote. And flying geese over here. She used the stripes for the handles, which look really, really great. Fantastic. And then my favorite project from the set is um, Hildegard's Notion Trunks. So Michelle hand pieced these hexagons for the lid. She used some of the Renaissance ribbons for the handle. And then I guess I'll have, well, we'll stay in the overhead for one more second. Here's what she did on the inside. So the divider, she really coordinated with the fabric. So the mesh matches the yellow, the fold over elastic matches the blue. I mean, turned out great. Even the, the Velcro matches the fabric. Then I'm gonna have Danny switch to the front camera. And then here's what, here's what the front looks like. So she did amazing. I just, I mean, the hexagons are awesome. She even quilted, quilted some of the bottom. So these are just some ideas for um, kind of mixing it up with your Minikin Season 4 projects. Um, I really appreciate your support with these new projects. Um, your excitement over them is really contagious and um, I'm just so happy that you enjoyed the projects. Um, Nancy says, bowing to the awesomeness of Michelle's skills and artistic abilities. Diana says, she does beautiful work. I love her fabric choices, definitely. And I just noticed, I don't know why I didn't see this before, but this goldenrod book cover, she even had um, like rainbow zipper tape. Is that coming up on the camera? It's getting your hands. Nope, it's not coming up. Anyway, there's a rainbow um, zipper teeth over here. Perfectly matches. Vertical. vertical? Yeah, in the center. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's coming up. I mean, just the projects are just so amazing, and I think it gives me some really great ideas for um, ways that I can incorporate some patchwork in some of my own projects, especially those hexagons. Like, she didn't have to... She even didn't have to piece that many hexagons, but, like, the effect in the finished project is just really, really amazing. Um, so amazing job, Michelle, and hats off to you. <laughs> oh, you're watching. Oh, Michelle says, thank you so much to everyone commenting here and to you and Danny too. Thank you. Great job, Great. Michelle. Amazing job. Um, so uh, I'm going to be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, you can type it into the comments at any time, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch Social Sunday. Um, and then there will be a giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I know Danny's been collecting questions throughout the show, but feel free to type some more, and I'm sure we have time for a bunch of questions. My husband bought the bundle for my birthday. Great timing on your release date. Happy belated birthday. I hope you had a fantastic um, day on your special day. Uh, Mary says, where do you get the fold-over elastic? Um, I'm not sure where, where Michelle got hers, but we do carry the By Annie fold-over elastic in the shop in lots of fun colors. Um, you can just go to SoSweetness.com to the shop, and uh, we have a Notion section, or you can just type in the search box, search box fold-over elastic. Audrey says, what model of sewing machine is that on the shelf behind you to your left? Um, that is the Janome. Look forward to Janome 6700. Um, I got that because my Jukies are straight stitch only and sometimes I need different stitches such as a zigzag and so that's sort of my backup backup machine I guess you could say. Thank you for the reminder Liz. Liz said did you show the yoga bag? The yoga bag is equally impressive um, just like Hildegard's notion trunk was. I just couldn't fit it on the table because it's so big because it's a yoga bag. But anyway here's the yoga bag that um, Michelle made Ho Center focus. hopefully it's coming up on camera I think it is love all the patchwork um, 
super amazing. I'm gonna put it down on the table so I can open the zipper. Danny, if you wouldn't mind, uh, zoom out maybe? Is that the farthest zoom? There you go. More uh, ladybugs in the lining. I just love, I mean, look at that zipper. That looks so great with the patchwork. And here's another view of the patchwork. I like the patchwork background and I like that the pockets are the deer print. Just really makes everything stand out. Love the stripes. Love the stripes here. Her attention for detail is just out of this world. Yeah, definitely. I can't imagine how long all of these bags took to make, but I mean, it was worth it. Like looking at the finished results. I mean, like just so amazing. Soap and Girl says, would the cork cord work well as pulls with the cord locks, like with the water bottle? Um, that's a good question. I haven't actually used the cork cord for this. I'm going to guess the holes in the cord lock are too small. Unless you can find a cord lock with really big holes. Um, yeah, I think our, our, I think our cork cord is just a little bit too thick for the cord lock, at least the cord lock that I've got over here. Tamara says, what was your favorite Minikin 4 project to design and make? That's a good question. There you know it's the Enigma. I know that's your favorite, Danny. There were a few projects that I had to work at for an extended amount of time. I would say Hildegard's Notion Trunk took me a long time just because I was trying to get the dividers on the inside right. What else took me a long time? The Miss Flower water bottle tote took me a long time to get the assembly right for how I wanted this front pocket to go on. But I'm really glad that it, it got figured out through writing the pattern because one of my next bag patterns is gonna have sort of a three-dimensional pocket on the front and it was good practice uh, writing this pattern first. And I would say the Sprinkles Baking Totes maybe was a lot of figuring too because they each had, it was sort of like four patterns in one because each of them had different handle placement, different um, like front panel length. Um, so I would say the Sprinkles Baking Tote was for me the most math and I'm not a math person. So um, Amy says, when will the sew along start in May? I don't have an exact date yet because we're I'm still trying to figure some of those details out. Um, but it'll be sometime in May, and I'll give you plenty of time. I think for our sew alongs, uh, the first week is usually spent gathering your fabric and attaching the fabric to the interfacing. So it'll be, you'll have plenty of time to work through the pattern. And I think the pattern is 24 steps. So I don't anticipate it being a super lengthy project to put together. Actually, I saw a few um, recent finishes over in the Facebook group. So, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to um, have that for our next so long. Teresa says, just a thank you to your mom for getting my order, getting me my order so quickly during such a busy time for you. Thank you. And that's my mom. <laughs> my mom says, thanks. We hustled this week for sure. Yeah, they, walk, they worked a lot of hours this week uh, getting all your orders out. Thanks, mom and dad. Um, Linda says, do you use iron on foam? I actually use by any soft and stable, which is a sew-in foam. Sorry, my hair is standing up all over the place. Um, I have used, I have tried out fusible foam in the past and it's just not my thing. I know everyone has their own personal preference, um, but I really like the, um, the sew-in foam. Gretchen says, if we quilt our fabric first, does it change the measurements of our cutting patterns? Uh, often it does, so I recommend, and I do have a free video on my YouTube channel in case you're interested in um, checking it out, um, how to quilt fabric for a bag is what that video is called. I usually recommend rough cutting your fabric uh, bigger than the piece as dictated in the pattern. Quilting your fabric to whatever you're quilting it to, perhaps foam interfacing, maybe you're quilting it to batting, and then after it's quilted, cut it to size because the more dense you're quilting, um, the higher rate of shrinkage. So if you have something with... Um, quilting that's really far apart, maybe like two inches apart, the shrinking should be really minimum. But if you're quilting like feathers or 
um, kind of like an all over um, quilt, quilting print, then you'll have a lot more shrinkage that way. Um, Cindy said 565 people watching. Please take a minute and hit the, the like or thumbs up button. Thank you very much, Cindy, for the reminder. And Patty says, first time buying the Minikins patterns. Could you explain the sew along in May? Sure. So the sew along will be, I guess it wouldn't be exactly a, a guide to sew along because there's already a video that comes with your Minikin season four purchase. But every week I'll have a different task for you, such as, for instance, week one will be um, cutting out your fabric and attaching the fabric to interfacing. And each week will be a certain series of steps for you to complete. And at each week will be prizes and at the end there will be even more prizes um, and you'll be able to post uh, photos of your pro progress and also photos of your finished pouch. Um, I should also mention throughout the next year we will be having monthly challenges which is separate from the sew along. The monthly challenges will be twofold so every month you'll have two different options to choose from. You can choose one or the other or both. Um, one option will be one of the Minikin Season 4 projects, and the second option will be another challenge topic such as um, make a sew sweetness project with repurposed fabric, such as maybe you cut up a pair of old jeans, maybe use some neckties um, to put together for your projects, something like that. So um, make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter. Um, that's how you'll find out what each of the monthly challenges are. And I'll also be letting you know on Social Sunday what each month's challenge are, challenges are. And there will also be um, randomly drawn prizes for that. And the monthly challenges are a lot of fun. Depending on the month, a lot of months we get at least 100 entrants. And so it's a lot of fun to see what everyone is making for that challenge, what kind of fabrics they chose, um, and so on. Um, Janet says, is all of the handle webbing in your shop? Um, I think we might be sold out of one or two of the tulip pink webbings, but we have most of them in the shop still. I, I carry them in the one inch wide tulip pink webbing and also um, one and a half inch wide. Suzanne says, how to keep fold over elastic from stretching too much? I'm not sure if you mean if you're attaching it to the top of a pocket. Um, I generally, when I'm working on a pattern that uses fold over elastic, I generally try to experiment with different lengths to see what I feel is a good length for that particular application, such as maybe a pocket. Sometimes if the, the fold over elastic is too long, then you get some, I guess, sagging would be a good word for it. So you want it to be long enough, but not too long so that it looks saggy. Wendy says, um, which would you consider a quick sew? I'm not sure if you mean the Minikin Season 4 projects or just any Sew so Sweetness pattern. I would say just the Minikins. Minikins. Okay, if it was um, Minikin Season 4, I would say the Lovegrass sewing machine cover would be the quickest. Um, so. Maybe the, the Golden Rod book cover, another quickish one. The Blue Stem Pouch. Oh, the Blue Stem Pouch. Yeah, thanks, Danny. That's another one that's kind of on the quicker side. Um, Julie says the monthly challenges are fun. I think they are, especially just having sort of an assignment every month uh, sometimes helps, especially if you've kind of lost your sojo and you need something to focus on as far as the sewing project goes. Carol says, made one, have cut out eight more of the mist flower. Wow, that's amazing. I, yeah, this is a, I can't wait to see all eight, nine of your mist flower um, water bottle totes. Soap and Girl, um, this is a good question. Will you be getting more of the rivet and purse feet templates in anytime soon? I apologize that we're out of stock on those. I do have more on order and um, we do have an out of stock notification set up on the website. So in case you're looking at any product and unfortunately it's out of stock, um, you can submit your email address on the product page and you'll all automatically be emailed as soon as I put that back in stock. If you're looking at a product such as Cork, um, which has a drop down box, you'll just need to select your choice from the drop down box first and then that email box will pop up and you can type your email in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Carrie says, how much do we pay for a solo long? Actually, the solo long's free. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I, I need to say about that. Um, Katie says, First time I have made it on the live version of the show. I'm so happy that you've 
uh, been able to tune in live. Um, I know most people watch the recording during the week, but I think tuning in once in a while for the live version is fun because you can interact with everyone in the comments, especially for our YouTube viewers. Like, there's tons of commenting going on sometimes up to an hour before the show starts. So I think it's a lot of fun interacting with um, other bag makers in the comments. Um, Mary wanted to know, will you be taking the summer off for yourselves? Thank you for the reminder, Mary. I wrote it down, but it did not make it to my timeline for tonight. Um, so our last show before our summer break will be June 4th. So we will still have a show on June 4th. Um, but as we've been doing for the past two summers, we'll be taking off from Social Sunday for the summer and we'll be returning on August 27th. And during that time, the only thing that will stop will be Social Sunday. We'll still be, I'll still be answering emails. We'll still be shipping orders. Everything else will be as usual. We'll just be taking a break from Social Sunday. Actually, I'm planning to use my break to work on uh, four new bag patterns for um, the next four pack bundle. Um, will all the Minikin series be available for a while as I'm relatively new to your channel and wish to buy them all? Thanks and special thanks to Danny too. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So there will be one week left to get all Minikins for $80 each. After the end of April, they'll each go up to $88, but that's pretty much their price for the time being, um, if that helps answer your question. And uh, Karen had the same question. Uh, yeah, they'll be $80 for, actually, is it already almost the month of April? I feel like April really flew. So each of the Minikins bundles will be $80 each until uh, the end of April. Laurenberg says, I find that when I sew, the fabric edges no longer align even after measuring several times. Are there any, um, any tips to help avoid this? I'm not sure if you mean after attaching the fabric to the interfacing um, one tip, if, if it's just an issue with you measuring the fabric and then after you cutting the fabric out, it seems a little bit smaller. I oftentimes will use um, a fabric starch spray when I'm ironing the fabric before I cut it. So what I'll usually do is I'll usually starch the whole yard of fabric or however big the piece is. Maybe it's a fat quarter instead. I'll use a starch spray. Um, I like Best Press and I also like um, Flatter, which is a starch alternative spray. So I'll starch the fabric, um, iron it, and then the starch kind of makes it, I guess, a little bit more crisp. And um, I'm not an expert, but I'm assuming it helps the fabric hold its shape. I find that sometimes when I skip the starch spray, kind of, I find something similar to your question. It kind of bounces back to a slightly smaller size. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it though, because you can usually make up the difference when attaching the interfacing, such as if you're um, cutting the interfacing to the appropriate size. Um, I'm assuming you're just experiencing a small little bit of a difference. And usually that difference gets swallowed up in the seam allowance when you're sewing the bag together. Um, Rita says, are the sewing challenges only on Facebook? Um, the monthly challenges will actually be on my blog, so anyone can participate. Um, you don't need to have Facebook to participate. And what I usually do, what we've done in the past years for the monthly challenges is I will have a blog post for that month's challenge and what I call a linky tool. So basically it's a little button where you can upload a photo of your finished project. And um, I know from the past um, there's a small bit of I guess, technological challenge with challenges with those linky tools. And if you ever experience something like that with the monthly challenges, you can always feel free to email us your photos and we're happy to upload them to the blog for you. Uh, Julie says, do you have any suitable bag patterns for a diaper bag? So I have a couple thoughts for that question. Um, the Aragon bag is a great diaper bag. And if you're looking for a diaper bag, that's also a backpack, the Chickadee backpack is a great option for that. I've seen tons of people make the Chickadee backpack for diaper bags or for um, shower gifts. Um, and you can find both of those on my website and they both come with uh, the video option for purchase as well. If you're interested in the video or if you're just interested in the pattern by itself, um, that's available as well. All right, Danny is calling it on the questions, so I apologize if I did not get to your questions live, but I will be back again next Sunday 
for Social Sunday and Danny will be joining me on next Sunday's show. I did real. I have to apologize. I realized after the show ended last Sunday that I neglected to announce the winner of, I guess, two weeks ago, that giveaway. Um, so I apologize, but I wanted to announce the winner live rather than um, in the Facebook group or something else like that. So on last Sunday's show, I should have announced the winner as Speedbully84. So congratulations to you. Speedbully84, please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with your prize. My email is sarah at soulsweetness.com. Danny's going to put my email address up on the screen right now. And my usual announcement of the winner for tonight's show is Susan Bonaro. So congratulations to Susan Bonaro. Um, also, please email me after the show so that I can get, so that I can get you connected with your prize. Um, I do have a giveaway for tonight as well. And that giveaway prize, I decided to give an option of a giveaway prize, um, an acrylic template from our shop of your choice. So whoever the winner is, you can just let me know which acrylic template you're interested in, and that will be your prize. Um, the giveaways are randomly drawn out of all of the comments left on the show, compiled from Facebook and YouTube. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show, and I'll announce the winner on next Sunday's show. And I have a bonus question that you can answer in the comments right now. What is your favorite So Sweetness project you've ever made? So let me know in the comments which one's your favorite. I'm looking forward to seeing um, what all of the favorites are. From Danny and myself, thank you so much for joining us for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.